Hi everybody, Dr. Mark here. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about cannabis, but more specifically, talk about one of its chemical components that we term CBD, also known as cannabidiol. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because there's a lot of talk at the moment, mainly online, about the potential therapeutic benefits of certain components of cannabis, such as CBD. So what I've done is I've evaluated the evidence within the scientific literature, and I'm gonna talk about what it may be beneficial for and what the evidence does not suggest it's beneficial for at all. So first thing is that cannabis, also known as marijuana, has around about 400 different chemicals inside of it. And of these 400 chemicals, 120 are what we term cannabinoids. Now they're term cannabinoids because they bind to specific receptors in our body that are termed cannabinoid receptors. And this endocannabinoid system that we have within our body plays a number of a multitude of different roles, such as involved in sleep-wake cycles, mood, appetite, pain, memory, a whole bunch of different things, okay? And so, 120 chemicals within cannabis has been shown to bind to these receptors and have a variety of effects depending on what subtype of receptor it's bound to. Now, of these 120, uh, uh, cannabinoids, you've probably heard of these two, THC and CBD. They're the two most abundant, and you'll find that THC is tetrahydrocannabinol, and that is the psychoactive component, and CBD, which is cannabidiol, is the non-psychoactive component. Probably, to be more specific, you would say that THC gives you that high and is intoxicating, and that CBD does not give you that high and is not intoxicating. All right. You've probably heard of CBD being taken as an oil, and it's probably the most common way that individuals take CBD. But what I wanna talk about is what does the literature state about its therapeutic use? All right, first thing is this. The evidence demonstrates this. So again, I'm just talking about CBD. I'm not talking about cannabis as a whole, whether it be smoked or vaporized or whatever it may be. I'm just talking CBD as a chemical. First line of evidence suggests within the literature that it is beneficial for childhood seizures. Not just any childhood seizures, but severe childhood seizures that often fit under these two categories of Gervais syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. Now these two types of seizures, disorders, are severe and are within children. And CBD has been shown to be beneficial for these seizures. So they've actually turned CBD into a drug, a medication that can be taken. And therefore, there is a therapeutic benefit for these particular syndromes. It's also been shown to be beneficial for chemotherapy-associated nausea and vomiting, and also for anorexia associated with HIV. So there's a tick there that CBD has been beneficial for those particular disorders. Now, the range of effects downstream that a lot of other people are talking about is that for pain, anti-inflammation, neurodegeneration, cancer, and anxiety and depression. Let's talk about these. Firstly, chronic pain. So, we know that cannabinoids or cannabinoid receptors, when stimulated, can play a role in pain and pain management. However, what we find is that the current studies looking at the role of CBD and chronic pain, the evidence is quite poor that it's beneficial, okay? So it's not strong at all. There's animal models, and what we call in vitro, in dish models, which show that there's some benefit at influencing or mitigating pain. But unfortunately, the evidence for humans is not that strong for its use in chronic pain. We need more human studies, more clinical trials. What about for anti-inflammation? Well, again, the animal models and the in vitro work is promising that it does play a role in anti-inflammation as an anti-inflammatory agent. But again, we need more human clinical trials to state whether CBD is actually beneficial for inflammation. What about neurodegeneration? Here I'm talking about Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Again, the models are promising that it may have some benefit, but again, more human studies are required. You may be sitting there thinking, oh God, what are you on about? This is what we need. When you take a drug that helps you, it only helps you because it's been proven multiple times within clinical trials, okay? Required. Cancer, in actual fact, there's no evidence to support that it's beneficial in the treatment of cancers, okay? And the last one, which I haven't popped down here, is that for anxiety and depression. There is some evidence out there, some tentative evidence to suggest that it may be beneficial for treating anxiety and sleep disorders, potentially depression, but again, we need more controlled 
clinical trials. So at the moment, the evidence suggests that CBD is beneficial for severe childhood seizures, specifically of these particular types of syndromes, and chemotherapy associated nausea and vomiting, but the evidence is poor for everything else. That is the current evidence for CBD.